I've spent the last 15 years sailing around the world living on my sailboat. Now I'm going to try RV living. But today we're going to talk about my mode of transportation once I'm in the campground or on my camping spot. How am I going to get around? Am I going to drive this 29 foot 8 miles to the gallon big monstrosity around towns to explore? Or am I going to do something else? I'm going to do something else. And that something else is a electric bike. My RV is 29 feet long. And so to tow a car behind it, it's gonna make it all the much longer. I don't wanna really tow anything behind me, but a bike rack would be good. Uh, just gotta figure out which bike rack, not all bike racks can go on the back of RVs and be okay. They have to sort of be RV approved. That's my 29 foot RV. Yeah, it's gonna be quite a beast to drive this thing, but I'm gonna do it because what's the alternative? Staying in this Georgian neighborhood for the rest of my life? Nope, don't think so. I've never driven anything longer than a station wagon in the past. You know, the whole time that I was on the boat, I always wished for a bicycle. From the day that I left the dock, day one, I wanted a bicycle. But on a 40-foot boat, it's just too difficult. And there was just not the space. Patrick used to say, sure, you can get a bicycle, but you're going to have to store it underneath your pillow. That was about all the space there was. You know, and we very, very, very rarely went to a marina, so it would have meant, you know, putting the bicycle into the dinghy, bringing it to shore, figuring out where I could leave it safely, or bringing it back on the boat, putting it on and off the boat. It would have just been a huge hassle, I agree. It wasn't the right place to have a bicycle. But now, now I have an RV, and now I can have my bike. It's not just a bike, it's an electric bike. And it's a damn cool one. What is this in the middle of the hallway? Let me tell you the story. I actually went to the office yesterday to pick it up at the marina. It's bigger than me, it's longer than me, it's almost as tall as me. I don't know, 70 pounds with everything that's inside it, I'm not entirely sure, but I had to leave and go get help to bring it back to the RV and stuff it back in here. So let's see what's inside. Let's open it up. I can't wait to see what's in here. I mean, I know it's a bike, but the question is, is am I going to like the bike? Is it going to be rideable? How far is it go? How fast is it going to go? I researched all of the e-bikes out there, the affordable ones, like a thousand and under. And High Peak was one of the three that I really thought was good quality and really wanted to have. And when I wrote to the three e-bike companies wondering if they wanted to be a sponsor, High Peak came back, which was awesome because they were actually my first choice of all three. It gave me a tremendous discount and I'm very thankful for that. And I love my e-bike. All right. Oh my goodness, let me show you. This is very well packed. Oh my gosh. I have to get this off the box. Let's look at something first. I want to know how big the seat is. It's a very important thing. Hey, that looks like a pretty good seat. Pretty cushy. Pretty big. And it's wide for my big ass. Good. Oh, and it looks like it has a bike rack, fenders. You can see a peak of the color down there, yellow and red. All right, let me get it out of the box. Let the construction begin. Peace. 
get it back because I'm destroying the box. I really shouldn't be ribbing the box. What if I have to send it back? All right, let's try to use the lift. So I spy that there's something else in this box. Instructions a nice light of some kind. The pedals, which must be part of the installation. That's the charger, 110 volt or not. Oh, it's like a little toolkit, everything I need to do it. That's good. So that means I don't have to go out to the garage. I don't know if it's just for the installation or for ongoing stuff, which I hope I never have to do any maintenance, but that would be a little far-fetched, wouldn't it? Okay, so we'll set this aside. So I guess the first mode of operation is taking all the plastic off. I think what I'm going to do first is watch the assembly video on their website um, so I don't mess anything up right out of the box, literally right out of the box. So, okay, I've got one more thing to cut here. One wheel, one wheel undone. All right, let's put the wheel. Over here, we're gonna have wall-to-wall -wall bike parts. Oh, look at that yellow. It's like my dad's old company truck. Yellow with the electric company. And red. Beautiful colors, bright and enthusiastic. No, that is not sweat in my hair. It's that I just washed it for the first time. Just like when you're a cruiser and you're an RV, you don't shower very often. In a boat, you can serve water. In an RV, you can serve gray water tank. In the assembly video, it says to take off all the protection, so that's what I'm doing. So I've got all the protection off of the bike. Here's what she looks like. The bike. Unassembled, how it comes. I don't have anything to it yet. Alright, I'm gonna go watch the video and read the directions. I'm very happy about that seat. I'm very happy about that bike rack on the back. And I think they've sent me over there in that plastic bag some banners for the back. The mirror. So I'm guessing this goes up like that. I would guess. I read the instructions. I still haven't watched the video. Yeah, there we go. Close it up. My hands are very weak. Find out that it's all the way tight, and they're not. In the bummer thing. That's nice. They send you some kind of a stand, so you can just stand the bike up while you're assembling it. So now this little handy dandy stand. How do we get it off? Here's the written instructions. They just say to remove it. Oh yes, they did give, in the video they showed this. I have this thing, I have a spring that faces that way, and then this comes out. This must go inside the wheel. Yeah. Oh, oh. Did you see how those came off? Oh, thank goodness. One more time watching the assembly video and it showed it very clearly. I'll link that down below. The little cones point inwards towards the wheel. That's all you really need to know. Yeah, I had to experiment with this a few times to figure out how, as just one person, was I going to hold the wheel and put the um, fork onto it and get so it all in the right place. So I just lifted the bike up and put this onto there. Same on the other side after taking off this plastic piece. And then I just take this part right here 
the easy release I think they call it and I stick it through here with these two pieces on this and this just like that and then so I just apply pressure on that side and a pressure on this side squeezing it together and then I just twist that so it's twisting because I'm not holding it but if I hold both sides and then twist them together then they'll be tight so once I've tightened both of those I put this guy facing this quick release lever goes up not down for some reason I thought it was down but it's up so the wheel is on I hope properly I didn't know what this was at first but I got a quick answer back from high peak it's a low speed compression damping dial it's for the suspension it basically makes the suspension more firm or more loose it stops the bouncing which is particularly helpful when going up a hill I plugged it in plugs in right there you can charge it in or out of the bike when it's charging it's a red light and when it's fully charged it's a green light I have directions to myself so I don't forget to keep it upright don't cover the top plug it into the bike first then into power and then when you're turning it off take away power from the wall and then unplug it from the bike but red is charging and green is fully charged the other thing that I've done is I've kind of written with white marker where off is this little mark right there instead of trying to figure out how this little cable plugs in I just look for that and I put it like that and so that this white mark is lined up with that white mark so I don't have to fish around with it and get a flashlight shoot out of the toolbox this little black bag they give you with all the tools that you can possibly need I hope those aren't all to assemble it because it's almost all the way assembled and I haven't used any of them yet but now I'm looking for a certain hex key to tighten this fender that I just put on. So, so now it's time to put the pedals on. I think I've got everything else on. Nothing too fancy. Let's see if we can do it. Got that on. Got the pedal on. Got the other pedal on. This is it. This is it. My electric bike. My high peak Bona bicycle electric bike got a little let's see if we can turn it on and it has right here is pedal assist level one two three four five six seven and that's the highest it goes and I guess mode is trip it's gone that far so far time since I powered it up 29 seconds shows that the battery is full I'm going zero zero point zero miles per hour odometer so far the bike has gone zero miles in its life and this trip zero miles in time and then I long press the M and it shuts off so I just want to see what the light is like on this. So I'm going to shut off the lights and if I can find the bike to turn it on, turn on the display and they say that you push the plus button up here to turn on the headlights. Let's see how they work. Okay. Not terrible. Not incredibly bright. Not incredibly wide beam. I might try to see if the beam can go lighter, but then again, I am like right up against the bed. And check out, check this out. It's a nice ring, huh? And when I'm pedaling, just uh, normal pedaling, I've got, I think it's, yep, it is seven, seven Shimano speeds. And it does have a throttle, it's right here. And it has high peak light on it LED I presume electric so yeah that's my bike my bike in my RV okay. 
So this is one of the accessories they sent, the e-bike mirror. It's 360 degree adjustable angle. It says it's easy to install. I need a five millimeter L key Allen wrench. So I assume that's probably in my toolkit that High Peak sent. I think it'll be easy to figure out. Anti-glare, wide mirror, adjustable angle, wide vision, safe riding. Okay, so we'll put that on. So yes, I'm having a late dinner. Been putting together my e-bike this evening. Those are the mirrors. Those are the parts. So they give you the Allen wrench that you need and the Allen key. And looks like a couple of, of uh, clamps to put each mirror on. So I'm off and running. I got this thing out of that door, believe it or not. I'm not gonna film it because it ain't pretty. Gotta figure something out for a bike rack. But for now, I keep it inside where it's safe from the weather and safe from people. And yeah, this is the beauty that she is. We're going out today. I'm gonna meet a friend down at the marina, about a mile away. Gonna ride down there and meet him. And he's gonna be on just pedal bikes, so he's gonna sweat keeping up with me. And um, yeah, so. This is the street that I'm on. Camper across the street. Have never seen it move, but then again, they've never seen me move either. And uh, yeah, a beautiful tree right outside my window. And we're gonna head that way and then to the right. So a mile later, I arrived down at the marina for Scott, but while I'm here, I think I'm gonna check on the boat make sure she's still floating it's kind of difficult having a boat and an rv i probably did that whole thing just a little bit earlier than i should have but what can i say so my boat's here brunswick landing marina and a great place to keep a boat during hurricane season in particular well brunswick landing marina i think it's time to check on the boat make sure she's still floating it says the yacht club is that way and the dock office is that way i'm on dock too so I'm heading that way, gonna go check on Brick House. So easy, so nice. Bye. <laughs> Poor Scott. He's gotta pedal his bike and keep up with me. <laughs> yeah, so we just rode our bikes to Lover's Oak and I'm gonna give it a little bit of a climb. I'm not exactly in climbing attire, so. I'm going to give it a little bit of a climb just to say I've been here, done that. How far did I go so far? A couple times. It looks like I've gone five miles since I started it up the second time. But not even sweating. Oh, it's like it's built for climbing. That's about as high as I'm going. If I fall now, there's a problem. Oh, I made it down, as you can see. Oh, down to my beautiful high peak bike. So excited about this. So excited. I do hope it's the right decision to have made to get the electric bike. Um, the motorcycle or towing the car would have been a little too hard and I love bike riding, if you can't tell. It's still a little disconcerting, like when I have it on pedal assist two or something and I stop pedaling and then I start pedaling. So the pedal assist kicks in and it's like, woo! It's like, oh yeah, I'm on an electric bike. Sometimes you don't even feel like you're on the electric bike, but when you start pedaling and you've left it on pedal assist two, yeah, you know you're on an electric bike. <laughs> it's pretty cool, love it. I know what some of you are saying, I don't have a helmet on, I should have a helmet on, especially riding around in the city like this, and believe me, one is on the way, it's arriving on Tuesday, but wanted to get this filming done for you while it was a nice day, so pardon the helmet, or oh, laugh. I'm not getting any help, see the big hero? I'm not getting any help, because I'm trying to film and ride at the same time, and I don't need any accidents, but um, almost home. There's home, coming home. I guess I'm pretty adaptable because, you know, just two months ago I was living on my boat coming up to the US and now I'm living in this RV and it feels ever as much as home as the boat did. 
the bow was just a home for a longer time than this one has been, but I've adapted pretty, pretty quickly. Always a bug. Always a bug trying to get in. And believe me, unlike a boat, an RV, the bugs are quite successful in getting in. To the RV. But I've got to put this big, heavy monster in that skinny little door without ripping anything up on the bike on the side of the door, on the screen of the door, or myself. So it's a little bit of a thing, but Michael's going to come and visit soon and he's going to build me a very cool bike rack. Or, I don't know, maybe I'll get a commercial one. We'll see what happens. Maybe the bugs can give me a lesson. They seem to get in pretty easily. I mean, if you listen carefully, you can actually hear the bugs while I'm riding my bike to this park. They're everywhere. There's so many bugs in Georgia. It's incredible. This is Windsor Park on our left. They have all kinds of parks all through this neighborhood with these big, majestic oak trees with Spanish moss hanging on the ground and falls on the RV, falls on the cars. Nice cars, this neighborhood. Nice houses. It's really a lovely place to ride an e-bike. I mean, like, check out this neighborhood. Check out the nice houses. pretty slow but love riding this e-bike I hate to put it away and start editing a video but I guess I have to pretty slow ride a little bit further but yeah this is sort of the, the neighborhood that I'm parked in and so the high peak Bona folding electric bike is a 750 watt 15 amp electric bike it will carry me for about 30 or 40 miles if I don't pedal at all, going simply on the throttle alone. If I help with pedaling, well, the more I help, the further I can go. Maybe about 60 or 65 miles before I need to plug her in. Here we go. Whoa, I must have had it on pedal assist. And... She's... This is great. I love it. It's really going to be a major part of my RV life is on this bike and exploring neighborhoods that I'm staying in and exploring the cities that I'm staying in and yeah it's going to be pretty awesome. Love it. Hello. I had rented an electric bike in Martinique and I don't know what kind of bike it was but when I ran out of battery at the end of the day that was it. I couldn't even pedal it. I couldn't even push it. But this one if it ever runs out of, ba out of batteries well I've tried it with the battery off and it still goes like a regular pedal bike with regular shift gears. The regular breaks. It's the house too. that I'm staying at, right there. Wendy's house. So I found Wendy on Facebook. She was willing to do a bit of a trade out to park in her yard. She, pl she supplied 15 amp power, enough to run my fans and fridge and a water supply. I had to be very careful so I didn't use my black tank at all. It was a trash bag for number two and a jar for number one, which I brought to me almost daily to dump in a real toilet. My wash water I kept to a bare, bare minimum, and next week. I think that conquest right there should be changed to brick house and next week I have to go to a dump station as it's approaching full after nearly a month. Conserving water on a boat has made it very easy for me to adapt to not filling up tanks. Mooch docking as this is called is what will make my life affordable until my boat is sold. If you have a driveway or a side yard I could park on for a few days or a few weeks please send me your contact details. Be hugely appreciated. So what I do is I put the front tire up onto the top of the ledge and then I just kind of lift the whole thing up very carefully very slowly it's not very easy at all so yeah I got it in I didn't beat anything up I'm a little bit out of breath it's not light but I got it in and now I'll just fold it up and I'll put it right there in that corner right at the inside oh. yeah it's not easy not easy getting it in the door, but it's worth it to have gone e-biking. I went 10 miles today. It was really nice. I went with my friend Scott, who was kind enough to take some of the video footage here. And um, yeah, he went in a pedal bike, so I had to go to help him keep up. I actually kept him just fine. Whew. It's a little bit getting it in the door. Um, Michael's gonna come and build a bike rack slash kayak rack slash ski rack slash whatever rack for me. 
hope in the near future. Hope we get to see him again soon. It might be a few months, but till then, the bike lives in here. So, whew, I need some cold water. This is a bit of exercise. And one of the best things about an RV is ice. ice. Oh, I've got to fold up the bike for the day still. So I'm just going to come over here. I'm going to pop this latch right here by holding down the red button and taking down the latch. It's a little bit hard to get it down, but um, my hands are really weak. So down it goes. And then I fold the handlebar down to the side, just watching that nothing gets caught. So I just fold that down slowly. And then I come to the middle of the bike here and I put up quick release and I push this over to the aft of the bike and then I hold it up and that basically releases the center of the bike so that it can open up and fold backwards. I can't say it's very easy and that you don't have to put your body into it a little bit but it's certainly very doable. And you know, as women, I think we work out our little tweaks and our little things to make it easier for ourselves. So I've brought it in and out of the door now probably, I don't know, six or seven times and I've folded it up six or seven times for the night. So, you know, you, you learn to work around these things just because we don't have necessarily a lot of strength. We do have some brains and can figure things out. I want to get a second one so that when guests come to visit me that I'll be able to um, explore with them on an e-bike as well. And I guess before I get a second e-bike, I have to get a bike rack. So whether Michael comes and graciously builds me a great bike slash uh, ski slash kayak rack, or if I get a commercial one, until that happens, I won't get a second e-bike. But once I get the second e-bike, I want you to come visit. <laughs> Okay, so I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, let me know what you think about my electric bike down below. Is that the best mode of transportation when after you've set up your camp in your RV park or BLM land or campground? Um, or would you do it differently or have you done it differently? Maybe you're currently in an RV and you have a whole different way of getting around once you've set up camp. Let me know in the comments down below. There is a link down below for High Peak Bikes. Uh, use my affiliate link. I think they give me a few coconuts, which would be nice. If you are currently thinking about buying a sailboat or currently thinking about buying an RV and if you want the cruising lifestyle or the RV lifestyle, you know, I hope you'll subscribe and you'll continue watching my channel because I'll be making a lot of parallels between you know, RV life and the cruising lifestyle. Maybe my channel will help you watch the old ones for the sailboat stuff and the new ones for the RV stuff. Maybe you're a widow and you've always wanted to travel and now you're by yourself and trying to get your stuff together. Um, you know, that's me as well. I'm a widow and I'm doing the RV thing by myself now that I've sailed around the world on my sailboat. And yeah, I'm, it's not gonna be a sugar-coated channel. I'm gonna show you the good and bad. So I hope you'll subscribe and watch. Thanks for watching. Hope you love my bike as much as I do so far. And uh, I'm sure it's, it's the high peak um, electric folding seven speed bike is gonna be a big part of my life. So you'll find out how much I love the bike or not and how it holds up by watching my future episodes. So please do watch and please do subscribe. And most of all, please do leave a comment down below because all of those things really help. Thank you.